Hey, this is Lauren with 10,000 Books and More, and today I will be interviewing singer and songwriter Rick Vaughn. Rick, welcome to the show. Hey, Lauren. Thanks for having me. I sure appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you willing to come talk to us. You so, bet. what first got you into music? Uh, you know, I can't remember a time when I wasn't just a little obsessed with music or songwriting, I guess. Um, I remember well, growing up in Kansas City, and I remember hearing the song Kansas City on the radio, and, and uh, I don't know why I can remember this, but I know I turned to my brother and said, I wrote that. So, you know, it proves a couple things that uh, I was really into music and songwriting, and, and I was a little liar. So, <laughs> So, but yeah, I've always, I've always liked that, you know, I've always liked music. Uh, there was a, oh, a, a, a kid that I grew up with there too, just the neighbor up the road, and he had a drum set, and, and I remember going to his house, and he was playing those, and man, I thought that was the coolest thing. So, uh, a while after that, I was able to get a drum set also and play, and so yeah, I've always, I've always had an interest in music. That's good. So, are you from a musical or artistic family then? Um, not so much. Not on, on my immediate family is not. Um, my mom, she played organ some, but mm -hmm. I guess that's about it. But my wife's side, uh, yeah, I, I married into a musical family there. My wife, she played with the uh, family band. She played drums with them. Um, and uh, let's see, my mother-in-law, she played guitar and had a couple, she, uh, my wife had a couple uncles that played in the band and, um. Uh, her dad played bass, and so anyway, yeah, that was a big musical family there. My my nephew on my on my wife's side, uh, he still plays bass with a couple different bands around the area. So anyway, yeah, I've been, we've been around uh, music with the family uh, quite a bit. That's pretty cool. I I actually grew up with a musical family too. My step family oh, yeah. is Hispanic, and my stepfather and my uncles all played guitar. And I used to sing with my cousin at family reunions and things. And my uh, dad played banjo growing up, so that was fun. I got a lot of bluegrass in my background. Yeah, I, I like a banjo. Yeah, you can't be sad playing a banjo. <laughs> so was the drums the first just instrument you learned to play, or did you learn yeah. on something else? or? No, I guess, yeah, the drums was the first thing. that I played that, oh, from oh, pretty little. I was a little pretty pretty little kid playing that and uh, played that through the years with uh, different bands and but then um, oh I was in high school my parents bought me guitar and then I was hooked on that so I, I like guitar that's what I play mostly now just mess around with that and I've uh, oh, played with a few bands over the years and playing either the guitar or bass mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah the drums and and just anything pretty much that can make a sound I, I like. I got a, a washboard, I'll play that. And, oh, and that'd uh, be fun. You know, bluegrass, I like that kind of stuff too, and that goes pretty well with the bluegrass. So, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, pretty much anything to get my hands on. Oh, yeah, so you're like me. It, it, I, I do a lot of different kind of cra arts and crafts, and I'll play with almost anything I can get my hands on. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you can make music about out of anything. Yeah. Now, do you do you write just country, or do you write more than one genre of music? Um, it's mainly country, but it's it's gonna. Oh, I'll, I'll do some Christian songs, but mm -hmm. it's all got more of a kind of a, a country or a bluegrass feel to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all gonna lean toward the country, but but yeah. Um, I, I like all sorts though. I, you know, I grew up playing rock and. But uh, mainly what I write now, yeah, it's it's all country or okay. Christian with a with a country Good theme. Thing. Yeah, yeah, Christian or er, Christian country music tends to tell stories, so it does. Yeah, yeah. you gotta you gotta really lay out a oh uh, kind of a movie, you know, just kind of like uh, a lot of oh what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, yeah, you gotta you gotta have a visual. I guess that's what I'm wanting to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you're writing country, kind of play it out in your head you know you can see it in your head happening as you're as you're telling that story right now um has your style evolved since you started your career um yeah yeah i'd say well 
like I mentioned, I, I was started riding rock. Me and like one of my cousins, we had this little man. We, I mean, we were just playing around mainly, just mm-hmm. we just hit me and him. But but we'd ride some rock stuff, and and uh, so it went from that to getting older and switching over to more the country music. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of evolved that way, I guess, mm-hmm. just switching genres. Is, uh, growing up and yeah and, uh, there's well taste, taste change and all yeah yeah taste changes we grow so right, right yeah but yeah. that had to be fun just hanging out with your cousin and and just coming up with stuff yeah yeah we had a good time we were both into kiss at that time so i remember anyway, kiss uh, <laughs> yeah yeah we were into that and, and uh, so we were playing a lot of stuff kind of like what they would do or some of their stuff and, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, still like them, but I, yeah, I don't write anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really for that much anymore either. Um, <laughs> now, how do you incorporate storytelling into your songwriting? Um, well, like we were mentioning mm-hmm. with country, what I tr- try to do is like visualize a story in, in my mm-hmm. head, you know, kind of like a music video, you know, happening and just kind of go from there you know what are these characters doing why are they doing this mm-hmm. so I, I try to tell a story and have something that people can kind of picture and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know in their own mind their own imagination so yeah so it's a lot of visual stuff yeah so it's a lot like writing a novel in a way except it's a oh, whole lot God. shorter <laughs> yeah you're right, right. Yeah, it's like yeah, a, it's, it's like a really short novel set to music right. yeah, i try to keep it three minutes yeah, <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah and uh now obviously country music tends to evoke a lot of emotion most uh-huh. music does but i kind of think country music kind of really leans toward that more than most things uh-huh. um so what strategies do you use to invoke emotions with your listeners i think it probably has to come down to the melody itself mm-hmm. um you know just the slower song scores more for like a sad melancholy vibe maybe to a oh playful upbeat melody for a, something's gonna make people feel good mm-hmm. so probably the melody has a lot to do with it uh, the tempo um you can kind of slow things down to kind of maybe oh make it more of a sad and sad feel to it maybe mm-hmm. so it probably to me I, I would think mainly just yeah just the uh, melody yeah the, that kind of sets the tone for a lot of things yeah yeah i think okay. so yeah well now you did share with me some of your songs so if you're mm-hmm. all right i'm gonna play the first one you sent write one like sure. johnny is that right okay. or write one like johnny master yeah 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 that's that's the one yeah okay uh, yeah, and I can tell you a little bit about that too. Either, yeah, you yeah. Know, after or, or before. Well, let's. Let me go ahead and play it, and then I'll okay. let you tell me about it. How's that? Okay, that so, sounds good. So this is our first song that you wrote called "Write One Like Johnny Master," or is that the master? Well, that's okay. actually just okay. the master. Yeah, okay. That's right. So like it's a Johnny. master copy. Okay, so this is "Write One Like Johnny." Right. And that was not the song. That was my cat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> If only I could write a song like Johnny I'd finally have a hit on the radio I might make a big splash in Nashville, but not the tsunami That he made all those years ago When he made a blue Kentucky girl out of Loretta Later out of Emmy Lou Harris Johnny, I'd give anything if I could have met you Maybe I'd have talked you into teaching me a thing or two Well, I can picture it all there in the great beyond Angel 
fields are singing you Johnny Mullen songs. Here I still struggle with words and melodies, but I hope someday, eventually, if I can do it on purpose, maybe accidentally. Chose to keep his job at Wilder Elementary While he wrote hit song after hit song But I dang sure don't have a choice here at the factory I don't think my big break is ever gonna come along I can picture it all there in the great beyond Angels are singing you Johnny Mullen songs Here I still struggle with words and melodies But I hope someday, eventually, if I can do it on purpose, maybe accidentally one life, Johnny All right, one life, Johnny Okay, so that was Write One Like Johnny by Rick Vaughn. And can you tell us about that song? Yeah, that was uh, written for a gentleman by the name of uh, Johnny Mullins. And Johnny was a, a legendary singer-songwriter uh, from Springfield, Missouri. So he, he never moved to Nashville, but he stayed in Springfield. He worked as, as a janitor, like in the song he said, where he worked at Wilder Elementary. But he was a janitor for Wilder Elementary. He wrote hit songs while he was working there. He wrote uh, Blue Kentucky Girl for Loretta Lynn. Emmy Lou Harris did it. Porter Wagner did Companies Coming. Um, oh, let's see. Um, Oh, there's several others. I can't think of who they are right at the moment, but, but yeah, he had songs on a lot of albums back in the day. Um, but anyway, I, I thought about that. I've, I've seen different oh, news reports over the years about him, and, and uh, I always thought how cool that would have been, you know, to meet him and uh, maybe learn something from him. Mm -hmm. And um, I got the opportunity, oh, um, no, it's been a couple of years ago, I guess, to meet his daughter. And uh, she, she now does a tribute show. She'll play his songs in different places. And we have a little store, and we had her over here to play. So we got to meet her. And uh, whenever I did this song, I thought, well, boy, that'd be cool if I get her to sing harmony on that. So on this song, that's her singing the harmony. So that, oh. that was really special to get her yeah. on that. Yeah, that's kind of a, so, a nice, sweet touch to have his daughter yeah. singing with you. Yeah, I thought that was really neat. So I was, I was really happy to be able to get her on that. She yeah. does such a great job and adds a lot to it. Yeah, and I love her, the sound of her voice. It's just, it's nice and soft without being too soft, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's, she does. It's, she has a good it's a, voice. It's, 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 a, it's almost like a soft but strong feminine sound. And I like yeah. that. That it's just kind of put a, a little bit of a softness in the, in the song itself. Right, right. So, so yeah. Can you tell us a bit about like what your creative process is like? Um, when I, I guess, the first thing I will do is come up with a melody. So I'll go and sit somewhere with my guitar and I'll just start playing stuff. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with different melodies that way, and, and, you know, several of them usually. And uh, I'll record those, get them down so I don't forget them. Because if I don't do that, I'm going to forget them. And then I'll um, I'll, I'll pick one and uh, start writing some lyrics. 
I do a lot of that. I, I still work a full-time job, kind of like what Johnny did. But uh, even if he was successful, I'm not. <laughs> but I'll, um, I'll just, uh, like on break, I'll mm -hmm. a lot of times go out to my car and I'll, I'll play the melody. I'll have it on a, I'll just uh, through Bluetooth off my phone and, uh, and just sit and write some lyrics with it. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a pretty good way to, to take it, um, to take a break and, and uh, be doing something creative at the same time. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's how I do a lot of mine. And then once I, um, I'll get one done. Sometimes it might take a while for I, for I uh, get it done because I'll write lyrics and mm -hmm. and then I'll rewrite lyrics and I'll rewrite lyrics and finally get something I like and then I'll I'll record it and um, and just do the just do the, the finished product, the mixing, mm -hmm. the mastering, and all that, and get it done. So um, now there's obviously you've got a different approach from when you write your lyrics versus your melodies. Um, so you write the lyrics first and then you come in and do the melody after like the, do the lyrics dictate the melody or do sometimes the melodies dictate the lyrics? Um, with me, it's always a melody first. I know some people will do it the other mm -hmm. way, but I always have a melody before I do the lyrics. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's always my process is the melody first, then the lyrics. Okay. That's an interesting way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So are, are like any of your songs based on any real life experiences or just things that pop in your head? Um, some are. Um, oh, I've got one called Digging a Hole. I thought of that one because uh, sometimes, you know, a person will be just talking and maybe you just say something. Oh, maybe I just shouldn't have said that. And it's like, okay, I'm just, uh, you know, you've heard of people just digging that hole deeper and deeper, you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's uh, one learning to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> that's where that one came from. Um, I've got one called Gravel, and I thought about that. We, we've been on trips around the country and and uh, get in these big cities, and it's like, you know, four or six lanes of traffic, and it's like, oh, man, you know, I'm yeah. not comfortable in the city, so... I'm ready to get back on the gravel. So that's kind of what that song would be about. Nice. It's kind of like, almost like my journey. I started in Denver. I, I make uh -huh. jokes. I was born in this tiny little mountain community in Colorado called Denver. Most people have never heard of. I've never heard of that never one. Never heard of that one. And now <laughs> I live in this big, huge happening city. I won't say the name of where I live for uh -huh. safety reasons. I live in too small of a town, but I, I make jokes now. I'm in the big happening city of such and such. Population cow. <laughs> right. Yeah, that sounds about like where yeah. I'm at. We have yeah. a, about 1,500 people in the community. Yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's tiny. Yeah. But it's it's a lot of land, and it's really pretty. Yeah, yeah. So, There's yeah. Like so I, I yeah. kind of went from, like, the big ick to the gravel, and I love it out here. And I'm a barefoot kid, so I like to go. Yeah. Sure, yeah, and sure. I like to be out in the woods and That's stuff where like I'm that. That's comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm comfortable. I'm more being born and raised in the mountains and in the city. I love it out here so much more than being in the city. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think I can do that. Yeah, so. it is rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so. used to country living. Oh yeah, and I gotta say, there's 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 a lot to be said for it. It's I I like the slower pace. I just it's it's comfortable. Right, sure, sure. So, That's the way we are. So how do you stay up to date with like current music trends and incorporate them in your songwriting, or do you? Well, I, I probably should do more than I do, uh, but I'll listen to the radio and I'll just mm -hmm. kind of see what's going on and with what they got. And a lot of country anymore is, you know, they call it country. It's not what I grew up with, you know, it's right, country. Right, right. But, you know, so I'm not really writing that type, you know, like mm -hmm. the modern country so much. Mine's more still maybe on the more traditional country. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but if uh, yeah, I'll listen to radio, I'll uh, turn on Spotify, you know, just to see what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I probably should do it more yeah. often than I do. Kind of, and, uh, kind of feels like rock has kind of invaded the new country. <laughs> It has a lot, yeah. It has, uh, you yeah, know, that was pop when I was yeah. growing up. When and, they play country now, that yeah. was pop music. 
Yeah. And uh, I guess that's, uh, that's here now, so yep. maybe it'll turn back the other way one of these days. Kind of one of those to each their own kind of thing, yeah. Right, right, yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure things have a way of, uh, oh, just switching back and forth. So, yeah, it'll probably turn back more towards traditional someday. Yeah. Hopefully. Never know. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So what's your process for, like, revising and refining any of your songs? Uh, that would be where rewriting the lyrics would be. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's a lot of that. My notebooks, uh, you can see that in one of my notebooks. It just you about can't make it out. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, and I probably should use a pencil, but I use a pen. So instead of erasing it, I'm just marking through stuff. I don't like and rewriting. So sometimes it takes me a while to figure out what I wrote down, really. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, mainly it's just rewriting the lyrics um, over and over because I don't want to just take the first thing I think of. Usually it's not what I'll end up with. You know, it's like not the best it could be. Mm -hmm. And try to say stuff in a in a different way. You know, not just in a common way, but try to change it up a little bit and, mm -hmm. and make it unusual. Um, I think that makes it kind of interesting. Can you describe about how how you would go about composing a song? Um, well, like, like I mentioned, the first thing mm -hmm. I would do is come up with a melody for the verses and the chorus. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd sit and write the lyrics and, and rewrite. And um, then I would, um, once I had something I liked, then, then recording it. Mm -hmm. So I just... Uh, um, I used to do all the, but all the instruments myself on a, mm -hmm. on each track, just kind of build a track, you know, playing each instrument. But um, I found different software now where you don't even have to do that. Oh, nice. And, uh, oh, yeah, and it's it's actually real musicians playing it too. I don't even know how they do it. It's amazing, but it sounds like you're in a studio. You, you can pick any instrument you want. And, and you can have your steel guitars or fiddles or, or just whatever you want. Sounds really good. So I've kind of gotten lazy that way. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, you just recording. you just caught up to technology. That's all. Yes, it's not I lazy. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. But yeah, I do like it though. It really really sounds good. Yeah, it's it pretty easy. Can you tell me about a song you've written that you're really particularly proud of, and why you're proud of that song? Um, there's one, uh, it's called, uh, With Her Eyes Closed, and, uh, it's, um, it's a kind of a Christian type song, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of sad. It's, it's about a person that has passed away. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're laying there with their eyes closed, but they're seeing all the stuff, you know, going on. They're seeing heaven, they're... You know, they're looking down on the mourners and, and, and all. And, and uh, so I think that one, um, I know both my parents liked it. Mm -hmm. And my mom always said, you know, when she passed away, you better play that at my funeral. Mm -hmm. And she actually did last November. And, and uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I made sure and, and I played that. Yeah. So it's kind of an encouraging song. That's good. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say that would probably be one that I'd. Oh, I'm, I'm just particularly, you know, out of, I guess, you know, just since I was able to uh, do that for my mom. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. really sweet. Um, yeah. I'm going to take this spot to play another one of your songs. Okay. Um, so this one is called Sinners. Okay. Yeah, so that'd be one of my uh, Christian themed ones. Okay. church way out in the country you won't find the blameless everyone here has strayed you'll find liars drunkards and junkies who all meet together every Sunday this is the home of 
frequent backsliders who've received a gift we know we can't repay we know we need Jesus to help us break ties with the viper and put our feet back on straight and narrow way and if you're looking for a new church home and you're far from perfect then welcome to the phone this place is full of repeat repeaters but there's always room here for more Won't find a halo above any head here Or someone professing there's something that they're not But you'll find people who know they need their Savior Parked in every space of the Grace Chapel parking if you're looking for a new church home And you're far from perfect Then welcome to the phone This place is full of repeat repeaters But there's always room here We're accept the blood of Christ and begin again. Yeah, there's always room here for more sinners. So we just heard Sinners by my guest, Rick Vaughn. Can you tell me about this song? <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, it's just like, you know, my idea was if you're looking for a church with perfect people, you're not going to find it. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, churches are made out of, you know, from sinners that, that need, you know, need Jesus. Mm -hmm. They they need that um you know his sacrifice so that was kind of my idea for that is that mm -hmm. uh, um you're going to always find people that uh, are in need of uh, you know redemption yeah so, yeah so that that was my idea behind that song i like that one well thank you That's thank you good one. now i'm gonna jump a little here um i understand after talking with you earlier um, you ha are on Kelly's Country Junction and the Krusty Bucket Music Show. Is that yeah. is that still yeah. happening? Yeah, well, there, uh, uh, Kelly's Country Junction, uh, I guess that one is over with now. They had, oh, I don't know, several seasons, probably six or seven seasons, and I got on with them um, back in 2013, and uh, they're just a country music comedy show kind of like a hee-haw type thing okay and um I'm anyway i was uh, lucky enough to be able to get on with them and uh, play bass with the band and, and did some comedy skits with with them on there also so fun. But, but that was fun yeah it was a good time where um, is is that was that like a local channel or was that a national channel actually it went national for a while oh, wow. um, it was on the harlan network and okay. and um but uh yeah it was on a lot of stations around the country um it started out just as a um 
little PBS channel out of mm -hmm. Springfield on that one, and it grew from there. So they had a lot of success with it, and it's still you can still see it on a, a couple places. I think uh, one is the uh, the um, uh, Farm and Ranch channel, okay. and uh, uh, Knob TV is another one. They've they've got that, and and they also have that the new one, the Krusty Bucket. Um, okay. the music show, which they're they're making new ones of that. Um, Kelly James, he's the one that's um, he's the, the leader of all all of that, and mm -hmm. the one that does the you know he's the producer and the director, and he writes um, all the uh, different skits for it. And uh, he's um, got that on on the Knob TV and and um, Farm and Ranch, and I think AIM TV is like AIM Christian okay. uh, station. So, yeah, several places they can be seen. But, uh, yeah, it, it was kind of interesting. You see a 30-minute show, and you think, oh, that, that wouldn't take long to make. But we go down on a, you know, like Saturday, and, uh, you know, you start early, and you're there late. You know, so it's mm -hmm. a lot to it. It's, uh, right. It takes a long time just to come up with 30 minutes. Well, there's a lot of set changes, and where you know the magic of TV, it's instant. But obviously, right. they got to tear stuff down and put it back together. Sure. I learned that in yeah. drama class. <laughs> yeah. That there's a right. lot behind the scenes to any kind of show. Yeah, yeah. So, so but no, it's I will, I will have to watch for those. Um, I don't know that I have access to those channels, but I will look. Um, I have yeah. satellite where I'm at because we can't get cable. We're, oh, I see. I'm too far out of the town, so. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, and, but, that, that I'll be streaming, I guess, now. Yeah, and I mean, I still have internet, so I could probably find you online somewhere and watch oh, it. Yeah. It'd be nice to see that. Yeah, yeah. So, are there, are there any musicians who inspire you, and what qualities do you admire about them? Um, ones that... The one that I really like, I've liked them ever since I heard them, was uh, the Steel Drivers. They're um, uh, bluegrass, but it's mm -hmm. not like your old style bluegrass. Uh, Chris Stapleton actually um, was with him at one time. He wrote a lot, a lot of their songs. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's probably the one that, that inspires me most. Some mm -hmm. of my songs that I write are kind of whole kind of sound like their style of, of thing i guess because of uh, you know i like them okay. um, and um yeah i guess that what i admire about them is just um oh, their musical abilities mm -hmm. uh, there's only there's just a few of them you know but boy they they really sound good so yeah steel drivers that's uh, been my favorite ever since i heard them for the first time i will have to look for them um as i said you know with my dad playing bluegrass I grew up listening to some really odd stuff with my dad. One of the ones he loved was Kingston Trio. Oh, okay. So yeah. I grew up with the Kingston Trio and Johnny Cash and just all sorts of odd stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I still yeah. have like this odd eclectic taste in music. So right. I just, music in general moves me. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds like some good stuff there that yeah. we listen to. Yeah. I still listen to the Kingston Trio. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be a good one. And I'm actually old enough to remember watching Hee Haw. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people know, yeah, these yeah. younger kids, you know. They're like, what's like, Hee Haw? I was like, oh my gosh, y'all missed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like they never heard of it. It's like, what? I'm trying to remember what Roy's last name was. He was the banjo player. Oh, Roy Clark. Roy Clark, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, whenever he played, it was just like, oh, we all had to shut up and listen. <laughs> We um we went to the Grand Ole Opry a couple of years ago and I didn't realize this but they filmed most of or a lot of their shows right there at the Opry. There was a oh, wow. like a whole stage set uh -huh. back back behind everything you know back behind uh, in the back one of the back rooms and uh, anyway that's where they filmed it so we got to see where that was done and that was really interesting. That would have been a lot of fun to see. Yeah, it was. Mm. So, do you have any artistic collaboration plans? None at the moment. Okay. Uh, there's some people I would like to write with. Okay. Um, but yeah, I haven't got anything set up with them. Um, there's a oh, there's a young guy that's from from this area that uh, has really started making a name for himself out in Nashville and. 
Mm -hmm. and uh, kind of an up and coming singer songwriter mm -hmm. and one of the days i might like to maybe do something with him i actually pitched a song to him recently it's the name's dallas stump mm -hmm. and um but yeah i wouldn't mind you know it'd be kind of fun if i was able to work up something with him oh yeah yeah now when you perform do you ever experience like stress or stage fright before going on stage and if you do how do you deal with it uh yeah always <laughs> always nervous um, when I have to get on stage, you know, just like my hands get cold, I'm just all stressed out. Um, and it really only goes away once I start playing, you know, once I kind of start and maybe get that first song behind me, then it's not so bad, you know, then it's, it's fine, but just first it's like, why did I do this, <laughs> you know? I shouldn't have agreed to play, but anyway, no, I'll do that. And that's mainly if, it's, if I'm by myself. If I'm mm -hmm. with someone else, it's not so bad, you know, if like a part of a band. But mm -hmm. if you're just by yourself up there and everybody's staring at you and you're trying not to mess up, and it's like, oh, oh I'm not sure about this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, once I kind of get started, it gets better. Yeah, it. it <laughs> I, I've learned that, like, when I was younger, I didn't have any stage fright at all. Uh, and uh -huh. I used to sing all the time with the family, um, with my stepdad oh, wow. and my dad both. And then when I got married, I married a not so nice guy and I was singing with the radio one morning and popped me in the mouth. Not hard, just, oh, just kind of oh. backhanded a little. And after that, I have not been able to sing in front of anybody since then. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> so I'm working yeah. on getting it. I can sing in front of my boyfriend, but he's about the only one. Okay, okay. So, well, you need to get back into that. I do, yeah. and I, I do miss yeah. it, but I, I get really self-conscious now because of it. Yeah, well, so, that's rough. So yeah, I can yeah. relate to that stage fright now. <laughs> yeah, man. But, well, I'm you know, and here. that was that was over 20 years ago, and I haven't had anything to do with him in almost almost going on 25 years so oh, yeah, so, sound like yeah. better stay away from him oh yeah yeah and that's the only time he's ever struck me and he didn't even really hit me he just kind of tapped the back of my mouth with the back of his hand and yeah, i was like yeah. that was just enough to be like okay you're disrespectful and nasty i don't yeah, want to be with yeah. you anymore <laughs> yeah, yeah well, but, that guy's like that yeah unfortunately i i got lucky though i found one that's amazing 25 years and the only thing I can complain about is he won't eat broccoli. Oh, is that right? <laughs> That's our That's running not... joke. And he refuses to acknowledge that the cats are his. Okay. Well, that's so, not so bad, I guess. Huh? Yeah, I can, I can tolerate that much. Right. So, um, can you provide a, an example of a song that you've written that was particularly challenging and how did you overcome those challenges? Oh, I've had a lot of those. Um, <laughs> That a lot of times I'll start a song, mm -hmm. and it starts off really pretty easy. Um, you know, get the first verse, get the chorus, and and it's like, okay, I got to come up with the second verse, and it's like, you know, writer's block. Mm -hmm. and, and just for me, I guess just stepping away for a little while, okay. just don't even think about it, mm -hmm. come back to it later. And uh, a lot of times you'll. Know, that will kind of break that block. It'll kind of come up with some other ideas. Right. So I think that's my way of dealing with it is just stepping away from it. Maybe you can work on another one and mm -hmm. then come back to the, the one that was giving me problems. But there's still some that I'll even now I'll go back to and it's like still that challenge, you know, coming up with an idea because I don't want to just throw whatever out there, you know, I want right. to do it make sense i want it to you know sound right and and uh, don't want some yeah. people having to scratch their head and like what am i trying to say you know <laughs> i just want it you know, to come off right so yeah yeah you know yeah. just uh, i'll keep plugging at it and one of these days i'll i'll come up with it you know or whatever i'm in trouble with whatever song i'll come up with something mm -hmm. and and people don't realize that for all kinds of writers, whether you're a songwriter, a graphic artist, right, you know, writing a graphic novel, or even just a regular novelist, your writer's block is real. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, there, and know. all these people, oh, there's no writer's block, you just got to do this, and you'll beat it, and it's like, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah, 
It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes so, the yeah. news just shuts up for a while, and you're like, no, come back, come back. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, yeah, we yeah. Keep, uh, keep struggling at her and just keep uh, yeah. trying, and usually you can get through and, and uh, come up with something. Right. Now, I was going to say, did you want to play or sing a song for us that you've written, or I can play another clip of your song? Yeah, if, if you want to just play one of the other ones, okay. yeah, then that'd be fine with me. All right, so this one is called Hankering. <laughs> When it's been one of those weeks, the only remedy for sure One that might torment my liver like it did with Luke the Drifter When I'm tired of my job and fed up with people, I pull a 45 out and drop the needle on hang. Twist a cap and I pour a drink. Raise my glass and I say my thanks to the man who knows my struggle is cured with a double echo hang. Gonna drink till my mind is blank. Grab the volume knob and crank him up. Let the record spin. Sometimes life just gives me a hang. Sing country like it ought to be About heartache, courtesy of all dreaming You can hear the emotion in every word Of every song that I've ever heard him play What I'm going through that he'd understand Cause he'd been there when I hear Junior's old man Twist a cap and I pour a drink Raise my glass and I say my thanks To the man who knows my struggle Is cured with a double like a hank Gonna drink till my mind is blank Grab the volume knob and crank him up Let the record spin Sometimes life just gives me a hank When I'm tired of my job and fed up with people I pull a 45 out and drop the needle on hang Okay, so that was the song Hankerin'. Can you tell us about that song? And I like that one. I like well, that one a you. lot. Thank you. I had um, me dancing. <laughs> Um, yeah, that one just about, about Hank Williams, and, and uh, you know, you can never go wrong, I think, writing a song about Hank. But I thought, well, that's, uh, you know, that, that word anchoring. I'm always thinking of titles, you know, I'm wanting something unusual. And I thought, well, shoot, yeah, that, that'll work out. Yeah, write one about Hank on that one. So you have, like, this deep desire to to listen to Hank. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where that one came from. So was there any particular event that inspired this song, or just? Um, no, no, just no, really an event, just, uh, just the title, just uh, happened to come up with that. And that's the thing about titles, you know, I'm always mm -hmm. listening to people, you know, if there's something they say, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that'll make a great song. In fact, I, I worked with, a, or I, work, I do work with a lady, um, Oh, there's a group from the Springfield area mm -hmm. um, that went national. They were, you know, famous, especially back in the 70s, uh, those are Mountain Dare Devils. I and, know uh, about uh, them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like them a lot. And, uh, you know, there's this kind of the laid back country style kind mm -hmm. of, you know, like I like. Of course, they had some more rock ones too, but. Um, I was talking about him at work one day, and and you know, the Ozark Mountain Daredevils, and she said, "Oh, you listen to the Devils' music." And it's like, <laughs> "Oh, well, 
man, what a great idea for a song. <laughs> so I, I wrote one about that called uh, Listen to the Devil's Music, and it's about the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Oh, I like that. That's good. Yeah. So it's always, you know, you just listen to people, what they say, and mm -hmm. a lot of times you can come up with good titles and, and uh, have something to go with there. Yeah, that's, an, that's a, a novelist trick, too, is, you know, you listen to conversations, kind of eavesdrop a little and get uh, ideas for dialogue and characters. Uh, yeah. And yeah, right, right. So I can relate to that completely because I, I write stories. So. Oh, good, good, yeah. And so. you can yeah, it's it's it. I mean, it's free. It's out there. Grab it. It's inspiration. Well, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what is your favorite instrument to play, and why? I it would have to be guitar. Um, okay. It's oh, I don't know. It's, it's versatile. You can tune it different ways. Mm -hmm. Get different sounds. Um, you can mm -hmm. uh, with it. Um. If I could play it, I'd say probably a dobro. I, I can kind of mess with one a little bit, but that's my probably my favorite one to listen to. But I can't play it that well, so guitars, I think, is my favorite. Not that I'm really great at that, but I can right. kind of do enough to be dangerous with it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the thing I like about guitar is like you can make it sound like it's doing a doo wop or a twang or classical. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff. My stepfather played six and twelve string guitar. Oh yeah, um, yeah. He, twelve string but yeah. it really has a really full sound. Yeah, he yeah, he like has those. he has a, a a Spanish and Mexican background. People don't know uh, the difference sometimes, but oh, wow. yeah, his father's family was from Ijar, Spain, and then his uh -huh. mother's family was from Mexico and that's where a lot of the music came in in my background was um, growing up with all that Hispanic culture and all that music oh, and, wow. and yeah, a lot of it was country that's... believe it or not <laughs> and Elvis oh that was the other thing was Elvis oh yeah 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 I he was Elvis, yeah. my stepdad's yeah. thing was Elvis so I was like, yeah, okay. right. yeah yeah as a kid I always uh, he was my uh, my music idol for sure yeah <laughs> So, what is your favorite song to perform? I would think of the songs I've written, there's one called Granny's Tattoos. <laughs> so, I think that's probably the one I like probably to perform the best. It probably gets the most response. That sounds uh, it's fun. Kind of a funny song. Yeah, it's just about uh, this lady, she passes away, and, and when they're doing the uh, getting prepared, you know, for burial and the they notice all these tattoos and places where nobody ever saw them, you know, and uh, you just think about, well, Granny wouldn't always, you know, listen to Amazing Race. She was out there, you know, raising some heck, you know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's kind of a fun one. That sounds like it'd be are, fun. <laughs> people seem to respond to it pretty good. Yeah. So what's, <laughs> what's the best advice you've ever been given? One thing I, I heard somebody say one time, and this has always stuck with me, and, and it's true, said, if you want what, what you know, let me start that over. If you want what others don't have, you got to do what others won't do. So, you know, you got to get out there and work for it. You know, mm -hmm. it ain't just going to come to you. Right. You, know, you see something you want, you got to go after it. Yeah. So I think that's the best one I've ever heard, and uh, man, it's true. Yeah, it, it is. It's, I like that one. Yeah. Thank you. So, what accomplishments do you see for yourself achieving in, like, say, the next five or ten years? Uh, it's, I guess it's just going to um, keep pushing, mm -hmm. get somebody maybe to record a song. Uh, that's been all well, the same thing I've been trying to mm -hmm. achieve forever, it seems like. Right. But, but um, keep, keep pushing at that. Yeah. And you never know, you know, there might be somebody mm -hmm. someday who will listen to something and and um, maybe maybe want to record it, and that'd be the dream. You know, it's, yeah. for me, it's not. I'm not really a performer. Um, I'm more just like to be the writer. You know, right. kind of behind the scenes and and writing the songs. So I'll keep I'll keep trying to do that. Yeah. Well, I I wish you the best of luck at that because I really do like the three songs that we've sampled today, well, and I'm you. I'm actually surprised that they're not out there. <laughs> Because they're really well done. I really like them. Well, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. So, can you tell me how you've evolved as a songwriter over the years? 
Um, probably with lyric writing. Um, I know when I first started, it's kind of like what I was mentioned earlier, I guess, with uh, just writing the first thing down. You know, you write mm -hmm. the first thing down, and it's like it's usually not that good. So I think over the years, I've learned that. Um, started doing all that rewriting and mm -hmm. and just trying to be real picky on what I'm what I put down. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's uh, that's changed over the years for me. Just writing it more significant, wanting it. All right. To, yeah, yeah. I like that. And make it, yeah, and make it uh, something unusual. You know, say yeah. it in a different way. Yeah. I'll just say it in the, just a common way. Just write it and uh, yeah, you know, write something that's a little bit different. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so, you. is there any like hobbies or interests outside of music that you have? Yeah, another thing that I, I really like doing is uh, video production. So I've got uh, video editing software on my computer. So um, I've done different music videos and, and uh, you know, like Facebook commercials for, for people. And, oh, nice. Uh, so that's, that's another thing that I really enjoy doing. So, uh, yeah, if uh, I'm not doing music, I'm doing that. So um, that keeps me pretty busy between those two. Yeah, I would imagine. But yeah. that sounds like a fun hobby. Yeah, I really enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, it's fun, and I can just kind of the music videos are just mm -hmm. kind of combining my love of both, you know, music yeah. and, and video making. Well, maybe that's you get to start writing some songs and make videos with your songs with somebody yeah. perform them, so you don't have to do the performance part. That could be yeah. fun. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I would like to thank you for your time today. Um, we're about out of time, but. Um, I really appreciate you coming on, Mr. Vaughn, and letting me give an interview, and I will share this out on my, my YouTube page as well as my Facebook page. Um, is there anywhere people can purchase your albums or your music or a website or anything? Um, yeah, and first, I'd, I'd like to thank you, Lauren, for having me on, and, and uh, I appreciate you doing that. Oh, yeah. And, and being able to talk about the... Um, you know, my love of music and yeah. I'm not sure to appreciate that but yeah if anybody would be interested in, in hearing anything um, oh I've got a few things on on Spotify okay uh, on Rick Vaughn and and then also uh, Reverb Nation I've got almost everything there I think it's uh, under ReverbNation.com forward slash Rick Vaughn and the number four Rick Vaughn four and um, pretty much anything I've written over the or last few years anyway that uh, would be on there. Okay. And I will put that information in my uh, notes underneath my podcast so people can oh, find you. Yeah. Well, thank um, you. Well, thank you. Uh, I enjoyed our conversation today. Yeah. And yeah, I hope, too. hope you have a beautiful day. And maybe I can bring you some, some new fans. Yeah, well, that'd be great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again right. so much. You have a blessed right. day. Well, thank you. Thank you again, Lauren. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.